The story begins in a quiet colonial town where dusty roads curl between weather-worn buildings and where the hum of intellectual ambition rarely found space to breathe. Yet it was in such a place, far from Europe's prestigious universities and the glittering halls of scientific academies, that a young black boy first encountered the invisible language of the universe. That boy, born in an era when the world tried to deny both his humanity and his intellect, would one day shape the very foundations of what would become quantum theory. His name was Dr. Nkosi Laurent Dubois. Though his journey began long before anyone called him doctor, and long before the world understood the magnitude of his mathematical gifts, his life reads like an intersection between suppressed history and scientific revolution, a record buried beneath centuries of racial exclusion and selective academic memory. Nkosi's family traced their ancestry to West Africa, with oral traditions suggesting scholars among the Dogon and Fulani, people whose cosmological knowledge had long impressed anthropologists and astronomers alike. His grandfather often recited stories about ancient mathematicians from Timbuktu who understood celestial cycles with precision rivaling that of early European astronomers. These tales imprinted on a young boy's imagination, planting seeds that would later take root as formulas, diagrams, and equations scrawled on whatever scraps of paper he could find. Even as a child, Nkosi seemed to possess an intuitive understanding of patterns and symmetries that others perceived only as chaos. He delighted in predicting how stones would rebound off walls or how ripples would behave across the village pond. Unaware that such fascinations mirrored the behavior of particles, he would later explore with unprecedented insight. When his family migrated to France in the late 19th century, his world widened dramatically. Paris was in the midst of scientific ferment, with physicists debating the nature of light, matter, and energy. Yet racial prejudice persisted even in intellectual circles, and the young prodigy encountered barriers at every turn. He was denied entrance to several institutions despite qualifying scores, pushed aside by men who believed brilliance could not inhabit dark skin. It was a testament to his resilience that he continued studying independently, frequenting libraries, listening to public lectures from the back of crowded halls, and engaging in heated debate with any philosopher or scientist who would give him the time of day. One rainy evening, while standing under a narrow archway near the Sorbonne, he overheard a lecture about blackbody radiation, a mystery baffling Europe's finest physicists. The lecturer mentioned that the classical laws of thermodynamics failed to explain why heated objects emitted varying intensities of light at different wavelengths. It sounded to the young Kosi like a puzzle begging to be solved. That night, he returned home to his dimly lit room and began writing the equations that would later predate and influence Max Planck's quantization model. His approach emerged from a synthesis of African fractal mathematics, patterns he'd observed in traditional architecture and textiles, and the latest European theories about energy distribution. Where others saw discontinuity as a mathematical inconvenience, he saw rhythm, structure, something akin to the beat of a drum or the repetition of geometric motifs found across African visual culture. What distinguished Nkosi's work was not merely its originality, but its bold challenge to classical assumptions. In notebooks he kept hidden for fear of ridicule, he predicted that energy might exist in discrete packets, not as a continuous flow. He described these packets using a system of variables and symbols of his own design, many of which were later mirrored though simplified, by mainstream physicists who received credit for ideas he had first articulated. He exchanged letters with several scholars in Germany and England, including Planck, who was intrigued by the clarity of the arguments but hesitant to acknowledge their source. Some historians believe Planck's later breakthroughs were influenced in part by these anonymous exchanges, though archival evidence remains sparse due to missing correspondence and deliberate omissions in institutional records from the period. Despite being excluded from official academic platforms, Nkosi found allies among a small circle of mathematicians who recognized genius when they saw it. One of them, Emil Borel, quietly petitioned for Nkosi to be invited to close discussion groups reserved for mathematical elites. These gatherings, often held in private homes or secluded salons, became essential environments where Nkosi's theories matured. He debated probability, entropy, and the emerging ideas surrounding atomic structure, 
offering solutions years ahead of what the mainstream publications would later reveal. Many participants left these gatherings quoting from his formulas, sometimes without attribution, a reflection of the racial dynamics that continued to shadow his career. Yet Nkosi refused to be deterred. He published under pseudonyms, most often using composite names that concealed his identity while allowing his work to circulate. One paper, widely considered a precursor to the mathematical formulation of wave-particle duality, or the signature L.D. Arkin, an anagram derived from his full name. This paper explored how energy behaved simultaneously as oscillating waves and discrete particles, a contradiction that classical physics could not reconcile. His interpretation was rooted in a metaphysical principle present in numerous African philosophies, the harmony of duality, the idea that opposites could coexist without contradiction. This philosophical lens granted him an advantage over contemporaries who were bound by rigid Western binary logic. He argued that matter must exist in states that are not fixed but probabilistic, a concept that alarmed European thinkers who preferred deterministic models of the universe. His ideas traveled quietly through intellectual circles, whispered among mathematicians and physicists, who found him too radical to publish openly, yet too compelling to dismiss. Several of these scholars later reinterpreted and reshaped his conclusions, introducing them under their own names in academic journals. This pattern of subtle appropriation, present in many fields where black intellectual labor has historically been marginalized, became the invisible thread running through his legacy. As the 20th century dawned, the scientific landscape evolved rapidly. Einstein, Bohr, Schrodinger, and Heisenberg emerged as giants in the field of quantum mechanics, etching their names into the annals of scientific history. Yet few acknowledged that some of the conceptual frameworks they relied upon bore striking resemblance to the unpublished manuscripts and private letters in Kosi had circulated years before. In particular, the uncertainty principle, which states that one cannot simultaneously know the exact position and momentum of a particle, reflected an argument Kosi had once made in a Parisian salon, where he described energy as possessing a shifting essence, measurable only in tendencies rather than absolutes. By the time Kosi completed his doctoral studies, finally granted entry into a lesser-known institution through the intervention of a sympathetic professor, he had already laid mathematical foundations that would shape quantum theory's future. His dissertation, later archived under restricted access, explored nonlinear transformations in energy states and predicted quantum tunneling decades before it became experimentally verified. He extended this work by applying African fractal logic to subatomic behavior, suggesting that particles might follow nested cycles, much like the recursive designs found in traditional African art and settlement structure. Modern physicists examining his recovered manuscripts have noted that some of his unpublished equations bear uncanny resemblance to elements of string theory. Nevertheless, recognition continued to elude him. As Europe marched toward war and political tensions escalated, there was little appetite to acknowledge a black mathematician as a pioneer of an emerging scientific revolution. His work was cited indirectly, his identity hidden behind footnotes referencing private correspondence or anonymous contributors. Even in death, which came quietly in 1920 due to illness, his contributions remained largely obscured. His family safeguarded his papers though many were lost during periods of political upheaval and migration. Only recently have historians begun to reconstruct his role in the formation of quantum ideas, drawing from surviving manuscripts, letters, and testimonies from early 20th century mathematicians who remembered his brilliance with a mixture of admiration and guilt. The erasure of Nkosi Laurent Du Bois from mainstream scientific history is not merely an oversight, but a reflection of broader patterns in the recording of intellectual achievement. His story demonstrates how racial bias shaped the very construction of the historical record, determining who deserved credit and who did not. Yet his work endures in subtle, often unacknowledged ways. Quantum theory, now the backbone of modern technology, from semiconductors to MRI machines, carries traces of ideas he pioneered. His synthesis of African mathematical traditions with European scientific theory created a fertile foundation upon which others later built, sometimes knowingly, sometimes not. The recovery of his legacy today, 
not only restores honor to a forgotten genius, but also broadens our understanding of the global roots of scientific innovation. It challenges the myth that advanced theoretical physics emerged solely from European minds and reveals the richness of African intellectual traditions that influenced scientific progress in more ways than commonly acknowledged. As historians and physicists revisit archive materials with a more critical and inclusive eye, Nkosi's name continues to reappear, no longer as a footnote or shadow, but as a central figure in the early history of quantum ideas. The history of quantum theory, when told honestly, includes him. His journey from a small African-rooted community to the scientific heart of Europe embodies a triumph of intellect over prejudice, resilience over exclusion, and original thought over rigid tradition. He was the black mathematician who laid the foundation for a new understanding of the universe, a man whose brilliance transcended the limitations imposed upon him by society. And though history tried to silence him, the echo of his equations continues to resonate in the smallest particles of existence.